what's the big deal if I drive around in a hearse? So, I sleep in a coffin. So what? Okay, okay, enough about me. Let's rap about tonight's movie disaster. This flick is so bad, the producers had to pay us to show it. Bad dreams, darlings. Oh, but first, a word from our sponsor, Kellogg's Tomato Soup. Oh. Well, someone was bound to turn this trend into a movie. Hello and happy Halloween. You know, before YouTube made making fun of campy horror films a thing again, there used to be a thing called a horror host. Local networks would air bad horror films late at night and they would hire someone to dress in a gothic costume and make fun of the film during the commercial breaks. Almost every major city had their own host. Philadelphia had Stella, Chicago had Spenguli, Kansas City had Cremation Mortem, and between the 1950s all the way to the 1980s, the horror host was a huge trend. So naturally someone would try to make a movie about it. Which leads me to the movie I'm talking about today, the 1989 dark comedy Midnight. So we know this movie's probably just a shameless cash grab on a popular trend, but what is this movie actually about? Well, the biggest trend in LA is the horror hostess Midnight. Her contract is up for renewal, but the network exec won't renew her contract unless she signs over the rights to her character, which she refuses. Midnight is my creation. She's mine. Isn't it enough that I made this show a hit? What does he want from me? Blood! Midnight also meets a young fan who is an aspiring actor that just moved here. Naturally, they begin a relationship, but the network exec is determined to destroy Midnight, even going as far as having a woman seduce Mickey. Mickey takes the bait and they break up. Cut to a few months later, Midnight is out of a job, and Mickey and the girl he slept with are the new up-and-coming stars of Hollywood. Oh, and people that do Midnight wrong keep mysteriously dying or disappearing. Yeah, that's a random subplot that gets almost no screen time. Honestly, this movie doesn't have the strongest story. I've seen it countless times, and I can never remember what happens in it. Now, I'm one of those tools that's all about the story, the journey, the character arc, so what I'm about to say is something I almost never say. Don't watch this movie for the story. Watch this movie for one reason and one reason only. Lynn Redgrave. You tell that power mad egomaniac that if he screws with me, I'll give him boils. He'll get itching hemorrhoids. I'll turn his sons gay. I'll grow mustaches on his daughters. <laughs> I've talked about Lynn Redgrave in my video about the TV remake of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane but I mostly talked about her relationship with her sister, Vanessa. Lynn Redgrave is a really fascinating actress. For starts, she's no stranger to the camp classic. From Midnight to Baby Jane to the 60s cult film Smashing Time. Ooh, that'll be me one day soon. What will? Up there on that poster with a smashing mature man helping me into my stoves. But she's also a renowned actress being nominated for two Academy Awards. Her first nomination was for the 1966 film Georgie Girl. You've got a decent figure, nothing to be ashamed of. You want to show it off? No, I don't. Give the boys a treat. Just look at that thing. She was nominated again for her role in Gods and Monsters. Have you ever been married? Of course, I'm married still. Well, what does your husband do? He's dead now. 20 years. Well, then you're single as I am. No, no, I have children and grandchildren too. I visit when I can. She's also been nominated for an Emmy, a Grammy, and a Tony. And then, of course, there were her Weight Watchers commercials. Weight Watchers, this is living. Oh, oh. I'm just saying, she's a jack of all trades, and I'm sure the film Midnight wasn't the highlight of her career, but she definitely gives it her all, and I really think she did have fun making it. I am the living dad. <sighs> One of the things I'd like to talk about is the character Elvira. Darling, yes, sir, it's little old me, that gal with panache who rakes in the cash. Elvira, mistress of the dark. I really should have said who rakes in the IOUs, but that wouldn't rhyme. It's very easy to compare the two. Elvira was at the time and still is today the most recognizable horror host. 
So of course this movie drew some inspiration from Elvira, but they are very different. The biggest difference is Elvira is a character portrayed by Cassandra Peterson. And Cassandra has made it very clear that being Elvira is what she does, not who she is. Hell, she'll even refer to Elvira in third person during an interview. But someone who definitely doesn't fit in with the crowd, doesn't even fit in her dress, actually. Midnight, on the other hand, is midnight on screen and off. She's always in makeup, drives around in a hearse, lives in a gothic mansion, drinks Bloody Marys, etc. So that's my two cents on this hidden gem. I do wish there were some things about this film that were better, you know, a stronger plot. And I really wish the character Mickey had more of a personality besides hot guy. Although I do like that Tony Curtis is in it. That's a great little homage to the horror genre, considering he used to be married to Janet Lee and he's also the father of the original scream queen, Jamie Lee Curtis. So all in all, I really do like this film, but enough about me. Have any of you seen Midnight? If so, what did you think? And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. You can do that in the comment section or on my Instagram page at official Dave's Lost and Found. Thank you again. If you liked this and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell, and as always, until next time.